So now we will discuss about Schrodinger's equation, the steady state form or time independent form. So we have seen um, the time dependent form. Um, so in many great situations, the potential energy of a particle does not depend on time explicitly. That is, uh, we have represented the function u as u of x t. That means it depends on the time also. Uh, but in many situations it may not be uh, depends on the time explicitly mm. Th that that means it may vary with the position of the particle only so when uh, in such a situation the Schrodinger's equation may be simplified by removing all the reference to t so if the potential is uh, depending only on the position on only only the position of the particle and not on time. We can simplify the Schrodinger's equation by removing all the time dependent term or the reference towards time. So that's uh, and then we will get the time independent form or time steady state form of Schrodinger's equation. So we know that in one the one dimensional wave function psi of an unrestricted particle may be written uh, unrestricted particle we have represented the wave function by the equation this so this corresponds to unrestricted particles so we are writing this equation in this form this is the equation uh, so in the left side we have used the psi as capital psi capital psi is written as psi and small psi as like this okay uh, just as we are writing uh, capital a n small a okay so this is the wave function for unrestricted particle and what we are doing is we are splitting this time dependent term and time independent term in the exponential so we can write this as the first term is time dependent term and the second term is time dependent so which means we can write a, a raised to a plus b as to a and e raised to b so we can so similarly we can write this expression like this that is we are splitting this expression so we will get two terms corresponding to uh, corresponding one term including time and not including time and this term that is uh, a e raised to i p by h cross x we are representing this as psi and the remaining part that is the time dependent term is keeping such that so we can represent this function as psi into e raised to i e by h cross into t here psi represents this uh, position part okay so we what we have done here is we have separated the time dependent and time independent part and this is representing the uh, wave function okay uh, so, substituting this equation into the time dependent form of Schrodinger's equation. So, we know what is uh, the Schrodinger's equation time in the time dependent form. Just we derived before. This is the time dependent form. So, what we are doing is we are substituting the wave function. Wave function in, the, in those part. So, we are just substituting that function. So, instead of psi. Uh, capital psi we are writing small psi into e to the power minus psi e by h cross into t and in the right part also right side also so here um, one differential is there with respect to t so we are differentiating this <coughs> oh. So we are differentiating this and we will get this term and in the right side there is one term dou square psi by dou x square. So dou square psi dou x square of this function means uh, it, this is differentiating with respect to x only. So this term is constant with respect to this differentiation since this is a t. A containing term so we can keep it outside the differentiation so the next part is dou square psi by dou x square 
<coughs> similarly here u psi uh, e psi e to the power minus i by h cross into t <coughs> so uh, if you are looking at this equation um, we can see that this term this exponential term is co uh, common in three terms so we can cancel this term so we will get e psi is equal to um, here i into i i means i square which is minus one minus into minus plus and this h cross will h cross will cancel so the remaining term will be e psi in the left side and on the right side minus h square square by 2m this term will go the remaining term is dou square psi by dou x square and here this term only u psi so this will reduce to the form if you rearrange the terms and writing this equation in this form um, dou square psi by dou x square plus 2m by h cut square into e minus u psi is equal to 0 so this is the steady state form or time independent form of Schrodinger's equation. So you can see that there is no time factor appearing in this equation. So we have removed the time dependency there. Uh, this, this problem can be, um, this equation is uh, valid uh, when the u is a function of uh, position only, position only, not depending on time explicitly. Okay, so this is a steady state form of Schrodinger's equation and in three-dimensional form we can represent this as uh, this uh, dou square psi by dou x square plus dou square psi by dou y square plus dou square psi by dou z square and the remaining term and this is Laplace can be replaced by Laplacian operator del square psi by 2m by h cut square a minus u psi is equal to 0. So the importance of this steady state equation is that if it has one or more solutions for a given system, each of this wave function corresponds to specific value of energy. This energy mm -hmm. quantization appears in wave mechanics as a natural element of theory and energy quantization in the physical world is revealed as a universal phenomenon characteristics of all stable systems. So what is the importance of this show? This steady state form so if we solve for this different uh, solve this differential equations for psi and we will get different uh, we will get one or more solutions for a given system uh, then each of this wave function is corresponds to a specific value of energy that means an energy quantization appears in wave mechanics mm, uh, and it comes as a natural element of theory and energy quantization in the physical world is revealed, is already live, revealed as a universal phenomena characteristics of all stable system. So this is the importance of this steady state form of Schrodinger's equation. Uh, the energy quantization naturally evolving from the theory. This is already an existing uh, factor in the real system. Okay. So now we will discuss uh, about operators what is meant by operator an operator tells us what operation to carry out on the quantity that follows it so if you are writing an operator followed by a quantity uh, the operation tells us that this operation should be done on this quantity writing after it that is meant by an operator uh, so, if we differentiate the, pa the part free particle wave function, which is psi uh, in the form, just as we described before, with respect to x and t, so we are differentiating this wave function with respect to x and t, uh, this uh, we have done before. So, differentiating once with respect to x will give you this value uh, and with respect to t will give you minus i by h cross e psi. So these two equations can be uh, rearranged and can be written in the form. From this we will get P psi. We can write P psi as h cross by i into dou psi by dou x. And from this we can write E psi as minus h cross by i dou psi by dou t. So for beautification we can write this as i h cross dou by dou t by multiplying and dividing by i here. So this will become i into h cross. <coughs> Evidently, the dynamical quantity P in 
P in some sense corresponds to the differential operator H cross by I dou by dou X and the dynamical quantity E corresponds to the differential operator I H cross dou by dou T. This operator tells us to take the partial derivatives of what comes after it with respect to X and T respectively and multiply the result by H cross by I in the first case and I i h cross in the second case so what does this tells us this equations so we have got p psi and e psi so this tells us that this is uh, momentum and this is energy so this dynamical quantities so this quantity tells us an operation of uh, dou by dou x that is the partial derivative is um, so this is equivalent to this that means um, an operation of dou by dou x should be done on psi and it should be multiplied with h cross by i so this dynamical quantity p means taking the partial derivatives with respect to x on the quantity following it and multiply it but by h cross by i similarly the quantity e means Taking the partial derivative with respect to T and multiply with the IH. Okay. Uh, it is customary to know, denote operators by map on the uh, top of this letter. So that is, this is, this is mean by carrot or cap. So, a carrot operator is represented by a carrot on the quantity. And so, P cap corresponds to the momentum operator corresponding to the momentum P. And E cap represents the uh, operator corresponds to the total energy E. So, from the above equations, we can write the momentum operator as H cross by I dou by dou X. And E cap as I H cross dou by dou X. So, this is the operation. Uh, which which we have the quantity that follows it and that will give you the momentum operator and similarly for energy operator so these are momentum and energy operator though we have only shown that the correspondences correspond expressions expression equations 3 and 4 call for free particles since we have started with uh, the free particle wave function they are entirely a general results whose validity is the same as that of Schrodinger's equation. To support this statement, we can replace the equation energy by total energy by kinetic energy plus potential energy of a particle with the operator equation is equal to kinetic energy operator plus U cap. Uh, so we have started deriving this operator from the uh, wave function for a free particle system but this uh, though we have started with free particle wave function but this final expression for this operator is general and it is applicable to all system uh, just as the showed in this equation so uh, for this uh, in order to prove this we can treat with the total energy which is represented by kinetic energy plus potential energy so the kin uh, total energy operator can be represented by kinetic energy operator plus potential energy operator here the operator u is just use uh, the kinetic energy is given in terms of momentum p by kinetic energy is re represented by p square by 2m so kinetic energy operator is P cap square by 2m where P cap is the momentum operator. So we know what is momentum operator which is nothing but H cross by I dou by dou X. So squaring this will give you the P cap square. So kinetic energy operator is minus H cap square by 2m dou square by dou X square from this. So this is the kinetic energy operator. And then the total energy operator this equation will become uh, we can write this operator separately as ih cross dou by dou t uh, this is the energy operator and for moment of kinetic energy this is this term 
and u is u itself. Now if we are multiplying this operator both side by side, you will get i h cross dou by dou psi by dou t minus h cut square by 2m dou square psi by dou x square plus u psi. What is this equation? This is nothing but the time dependent Schrodinger's equation. So what we have got here is uh, we have uh, uh, got uh, from this energy operators the Schrodinger's equation that is postulating the energy and momentum operator is equivalent to postulating Schrodinger's equation. So from this it is clear that is it is applicable to all system. Okay, so this is about uh, operators. So we have to discuss uh, one more concept here that is eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. An eigenvalue equation can be represented usually in the form g cap psi n is equal to g n psi n. Here g cap this is the eigenvalue equation. This, uh, it, it should be the form of this eigenvalue equation. Here g cap is the operator corresponding to the dynamical quantity g and gn which is appearing on the right side is a real number that is what does this equation means an operator operating on a function gives the same wave function this wave function and this wave functions are same same wave function with a multiplicative of real number is called an eigenvalue equation. So an eigenvalue equation is obtained by operating an operator on a wave function and what will be the result? The result is the same wave functions with a multiple multiplicative factor of real numbers. So if an equation appearing in this form or a wave function appearing in, the, in this form this equation is known as eigenvalue equation and this wave function this wave function is known as eigen eigen function and the corresponding to the operator g and this value gn is called the eigen value so this is the eigen value and this wave function is the eigen function okay when this equation holds for a wave function of a system it is a fundamental postulates of quantum mechanics that any measured any measurement of g can only yield one of the values gn if measurements of G are made on a number of identical systems, all in states described by a particular eigen function, psi n, and each measurement will yield a single value GK. So, uh, when this, when such an equation, when such an eigenvalue equation falls for a wave function corresponding to a system, um, it is a fundamental postulates of quantum mechanics that any measurement of g can only yield one of these values of g n. If this particular equation, eigenvalue equation holds for a system, then any measurement of g will yield only values will give you a result g n. If measurement of g are made on a number of identical systems, uh, all in states described by a particular eigen function. So, if you are doing such a measurement of on a part on a system described by an eigen, single eigen function psi n corresponding to an identical system then each measurement will give a single value gk so this is the importance of this eigen value equation so here um, this is the eigen value equation and this is the uh, this wave function is the eigen function and this is the eigen value okay so this is all about uh, these concepts in this module.